you, people. I've been meaning to do a sharpening tutorial for ages, eh? Um, because I've had heaps of people asking me about it. And today, let me show you. I'm going to have a go at carving this stump. Now, yeah, I've hit concrete in here before. On this line that I took, I think I hit concrete about here or here. So I'm going to avoid that. And that's <laughs> that's really the need. Well, that's really the reason why I need to give this a proper sharpening. So, <coughs> heaps of confusion about sharpening. We used to just use a round file, and we would have to watch not just the top plate angle, which is this angle here. Yeah, this 30 degree angle running across here. We didn't used to just have to watch that. We used to have to watch the hook that we got, yeah? Because we don't want to go too deep into the tooth with the round file. Because if we do that, we end up with a, a big hook on the tooth. And if we don't go deep enough into the tooth, we end up with a, a backward slope on the tooth, and it's not going to cut either. So, back in the day, we had these gadgets. And we'd be lining up angles with the tooth, and we'd have to measure stuff heaps. This is how I sharpen now, okay? Let me show you. I'm going to give you a couple of different angles to see what I'm doing. And then we're going to look at teeth. So all I'm doing is keeping this file 90 degrees to the bar, perpendicular to the bar. I'm making sure that I match up This angle parallel with the bar as I push through. And that gives me a 30 degree angle for this tooth, this top plate angle, which is the, the angle this chain wants. Now, the first time you push through, you're going to feel some resistance if it's blunt because the tooth isn't smooth. And you want to take the tooth back until you've taken all the damage off it. Let me see if I can try and show you this. This is the tooth I just did. Can you see there's no there's no blemishes or scores on that? And here's one I've just about I'm just about to do. It's much more rounded. Rounded over at this pointy corner. Yeah? And I can see damage on it. I don't know if you can on this camera. Let me give you a different angle. That first stroke to get the rough edge off. And then I'm counting my strokes as I do this. So I'm trying to leave the, the teeth as, as even as possible so they're all the same length, roughly. This is a field sharpen. Now, let me see if you can see this. Here, on the edge of the tooth, because we've pushed a round file through, or we've pushed a file through, we end up with a little beveled corner coming over the tooth. It's really important that we take that off with the bottom of the file. That's why all file handles look like this. super important to take that off. If we don't do that, it's going to come off during the cut. Let me show you this tooth after I've finished it. nice pointy corner to it now. And the gullet's clean. This is the gullet in here. So once you've gone round and you've done all your teeth, I've 
I think I've got about half of this chain left to do on this side, this right hand side. But I'll show you now. This is called a depth gauge. In front of the tooth, here, this is our depth gauge. This is our tooth. Depth gauge tooth. Depth gauge tooth. It's also known as a raker because it does two jobs. It sets the depth for the tooth and it rakes out the cut after the, the tooth in front. So it's got double purpose. This needs to be lowered once we get a bit into the tooth, about a quarter of the way into the tooth usually in most chains. You need to start looking at it. If we just do this by hand with a, a flat file, what's going to happen is we might take too much off. This is a tiny piece of metal. And the other job it does, see the way it's rounded here at the edge? It reduces kickback from this kickback zone in the top corner of the saw. So if we take too much off, we're going to get more kickback. So this is a depth gauge regulator. It just sits on top of the teeth like this. If you don't use one of these, you're doing it wrong. Or you're trusting to luck. Now I'm taking so little off that tooth. That depth, sorry, that depth gauge. Let me just show you. Can you see that shiny now? And that one too. I've done all the left-hand side cutters and depth cages. So that's what we want them to look like. I'm going to do the rest of the depth cages once I finish all the teeth. And then hopefully I'm going to show you the saw powering through this beech stump. So I can get home for my dinner. There's grinders on the market. Apparently the grinders with the ceramic disc are really, really good. But you still have to watch that you don't heat up the tooth too much. This is a 24 inch guide bar. There's 84 drive links. So that means there's 42 teeth to sharpen. I can do 42 teeth by hand. I've seen some really great finishes on grinders, or from, on chains from grinders that have stayed sharp for some time but it never seems to be as good as doing it by hand Can you see the way I'm pushing the file through in a really nice straight line? Let me try and show you There's very little deviation of the file so the gullet's nice and smooth on the way through you have to help the tooth deliver the wood chip, you know? Now, here's the rub. These aren't teeth. They're all little mini planers. And you should totally be doing this with gloves on. Depending on your level of experience. I've been using chainsaws for 27 years, professionally, so pretty good at not cutting myself. And whenever I'm using this saw, I'll probably go and try and find my um, anti-vibration gloves. Or my reducing vibration gloves. Gel gloves, they're really, really good. White finger is no joke, people. Two more teeth. I used to use a roller guide for this and I lose the roller guides because they're not attached to the file. That's why I don't use them anymore. These are attached to it. I've got a little sharpening kit for all quarter inch, three eighth pico, 
325, 38 and 404 chains. So I've, I've got a, a sharpening kit for all the different chain pitches that we use. And inside my sharpening kit there's a big bag of gloves. Edges. It's really important to make sure you knock the filings out of the, the file every now and again. You get a better cut with the file. And I always try and sharpen as close to the vice as I, as I can. Not so much the depth gauges, there's less reverb from the depth gauges, but if you try and sharpen a tooth way far away from the device, the, the bar is going to vibrate and you won't get a proper finish to your tooth. We're taking off good polishings there. This has got a sprocket nose bar, and this is a sprocket nose that needs, needs greased every now and again. Now, I don't know about you guys, but these are the best grease guns in the market. That I find anyway, they're like four quid. And you can see there now, grease has come through the bar and off the other side. These actually work, these grease guns. Rockwood. I can stick a link in the title description for you. New pack of files, they're going to come in handy. So let's give this a touch up and see what it goes like.
That's cutting pretty square and flat. I'm pretty happy with that. It's these bits we want to mess, eh? So that's what, one, two, three, four feet across.
It's slotted through from the back side as well. So there's a drain hole. This is a pretty comfy chair. I hope the owners are happy with it. 